advantage of the day. Okay. When you get an opportunity in this game, you make a play. Go yeah. Playmakers on three. One, two, three. Playmakers. Touchdown, Kansas City. The Chiefs are right in the thick of it, baby. Well, hello once again, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Defending the Kingdom. By the way, it's brought to you by 360 Vodka, the official vodka of the Chiefs Kingdom. And, of course, the hometown, uh, Kansas City Vodka, 360 Vodka. Mitch Holtis with you, voice of the Chiefs, along with Matt Stad himself, Chiefs reporter Matt McMullen. So, I'm uh, those of you who are watching and listening, we've busted out the Chiefs Run the West t-shirts that we got with the, there you go, uh, with the sixth. Uh, consecutive AFC West title. Uh, so now this will be probably the last time we wear this T-shirt unless we're working out in the offseason because now it's on to the playoffs. But this episode is entitled The Mad Scramble. And oh my gosh, is the NFL right now a mad scramble? So is the Chiefs Kingdom. But Matt, before we get into some of the specifics of why we're in the mad scramble, some of our folks who listen and watch around the world to Defending the Kingdom. Every week, this grows. And every week, I say this because it's true. This is like the best part of my week is seeing all the people all over the world and all over the country listening to this show and just taking 30 minutes out of their day and just thinking and talking about the Chiefs. It's awesome. And there's this is probably the longest list that we've had since we started doing this, which is so cool. It took me like 20 minutes just to write all these names down. So bear with me. I hope you're comfortable. Um, so around the world, we'll start with those people. We have James in Amsterdam, Charles in Tokyo. He's originally from Excelsior Springs, but now lives out there in Japan. Uh, Donna in Belize. We have a fan in Germany. Carlos in the Dominican Republic. Reiner in Germany. A fan in Bangkok. Callie in Sheffield, UK. We have Brad in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Doug in Kissimmee, Kenya. Jim in Fiji. Larry in Dundee, Scotland. Steve in Morocco. Then Thurston in Germany. So we have three people in Germany and also several people in Asia. I feel like for all the people around the world listening, we haven't had a huge Asian contingent. So we're, we're building up our stock here in Asia, which is good. Now we just have tons of people all over the country here as well. So we have Dean from Parrington, Texas. Uh, Jacob sent your name in, uh, Dean. Georgia in Northern California. A fan in South Hill, Virginia. Bob in San Antonio. Pamela in Bauxite, Arkansas. Carla in McGurk, Missouri, Dino in Las Vegas, Greg in Winter Garden, Florida, Gail in Springfield, Missouri, Jody in Marshfield, Missouri, a fan in Papillion, Nebraska, John in Elkins, West Virginia, a fan in Council Bluffs, Iowa, Sandy in Beatrice, I, I went to a, a site to figure out how to say this correctly, Sandy, Beatrice, Nebraska, not Beatrice, Beatrice. Not Beatrice. I think that's right. Beatrice, Nebraska. Oh, it's Beatrice. I'll tell you, it's Beatrice. <laughs> I knew you knew that. <laughs> uh, Enrique from Minnesota. Terry in South Dakota. Kirk in Humboldt, Iowa. He's been a fan for 30 years. Uh, a fan in Hannibal, Missouri. A fan in Plano, Texas. Stuart in Brookfield, Missouri. Bob in Littleton, Colorado. John in Wichita, Kansas. Anthony from Joplin, Missouri, but he drives a truck all over the country and has his Chiefs decals uh, presented proudly. So uh, what's up to Anthony? We have Scott in Corpus Christi, Texas. Chris in Montgomery, Texas. Paul in Leesville, Louisiana. Says it's the heart of Saints country. He represents the Chiefs. Uh, Bob in Unionville, Missouri. Mike in Manchester, New York. Steve in Saginaw, Texas. Mark in Idaho Springs, Colorado. Garrett in Hemingford, Nebraska. He actually spent time in Smith Center growing up, though, including in eighth grade. He played a season in Smith Center. And then lastly, Nancy. She did not tell me where she's from, but she reached out over Twitter. She loves the show, so I think she deserves a shout out. But people all over the world, all over the country listening to DTK, hello to all of you. And thank you so much, as always, for listening. Yeah, I didn't know we were so big in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, but hey, that's awesome. That's two Vietnams this year. And then the Germans. So three Germans on that list. Of course, we... You know, we broke that news when we were, where were we? We were in uh, Los Angeles, I think. Yeah. Or maybe, or yeah, we broke the news that uh, we have like marketing rights in Germany. So it's going to be fun to see what happens uh, in the country of Germany over the next several years. So exciting there with all of our folks that are watching and listening to Defending the Kingdom. This episode is entitled The, Ma entitled the Mad Scramble. And let's talk about the first Mad Scramble, which has been the entire National Football League season. The league, Matt, got what they wanted. They add a 17th game. They're thinking, we want drama in the 17th week. But to get to this point, there was a point at, after 12 weeks in the season, 25 games 
had been decided on the last play of the game. And we saw it in week 15 with the Chiefs walk off against the uh, uh, against the Chargers in overtime. And then we saw it last week, basically a walk off on the last play of the game by the Bengals to win 34 31. This has been nuts. But now all of a sudden, there is this flow chart of games in week 18, the 17th week for all teams, that starts with the Chiefs. The fuse gets lit at 3 30 Saturday, 3 30 Central Time, 2 30 Mountain Time. But that lights the fuse for this huge flow chart of stuff, a scramble, if you will. And it has been wild this whole year. Yeah, you're right. This is what the NFL wanted for sure. This is also why they pushed all the divisional games toward the last several games of the season, because they wanted these things to be decided late. I think the NFL is getting tired of week 17, back before we had a week 18. They were getting tired of week 17 not really meaning much for many teams. I mean, why are fantasy playoffs ending a week early? It's because so many teams were sitting players in the final week of the season uh, because things had already been decided. I could be wrong, but I think the Packers are the only team that truly have nothing to gain from the final week of the season. Even teams that are firmly in the playoffs, their seeding could change a little bit based on what happens in this final week. This is what the NFL wanted. And I'm kind of glad our game is on a Saturday, honestly. I think the players have said this as well, because after Cincinnati, which was a bummer of a game, if we're being honest, it's a game that we feel like we probably should have won. All you want to do is get back out there and play, right? And the players have echoed that sentiment. Uh, I think they're excited to get back out there on a Saturday. And it's one of those games where I think the Broncos are going to feel um, the fury of a thousand suns from the Chiefs <laughs> because the Chiefs are not happy with how the game last week ended. They want to go back out there and prove uh, what they can do and feel good heading into the postseason so very excited to have this game on a Saturday uh, then see all the chaos ensue uh, after our game it has been chaotic all year long throughout the National Football League but that's why go back to last week's episode on defending the kingdom which is the best reality show I mean it's it's been exactly that and no script writer could write this like this the second part of the mad scramble has been unfortunately COVID-19 now we've seen that its impact throughout the globe for the last two years, basically. We're getting close to 24 months now. But in the National Football League in specific, over the past 100 days, it has been crazy. Take the Denver Broncos, this week's opponent as an example. I went back and looked, and last week they were affected, 19 different players affected uh, on the COVID list. They had 57 transactions, I wanna get this right, from December the 29th to January 3. That's a span of six days. They had 57 transactions. People added to the COVID list, COVID replacements, reinstated, practice squad ads, practice squad deletes. It's just been this crazy mishmash where teams, it's been nuts to follow this. And uh, again, and the Chiefs went through it the week before the Pittsburgh game. It was talked about the first foe, the minute with Mitch I did the very first week of 2020, and that's now it's back. The Chiefs had, I'm gonna get this right again, 45 transactions in a span of 10 days from December 16 to Christmas. It's been crazy with the COVID-19. Who's in, who's out, who's in for the who's out is the who out back in. Yeah, it's been crazy. It's one of those things where every week you and I are waiting for the transactions to come out just to make sure that we're we're good to proceed to the next day. And whenever we don't have players pop up on that list, it's like uh, I have a pep in my step. You know, I'm like, all right, we're, we're, we're at full strength here because, yeah, that last couple of weeks where we had a lot of guys on the list, that was stressful. And a peek behind the curtain for what we do, we shoot our stuff, our Kingdom Conversation segment that goes into High V Chiefs Insider on a Tuesday. Well, the one week where we had all those different guys added to the list, we found that out that we had some guys added like minutes before our segment. And we're wondering, are we going to have more guys added? Like after we shoot this, this is going to air on a Saturday. It was just lots of confusion, but it's stressful. And this time of year, for sure, you want to be playing your best football, obviously, but you also want to have all your guys because you work so hard all year long to get to this point, to have a chance to win a championship. And you want all your players healthy and ready to go to pursue that championship. The good news for the Chiefs is, my hope at least, is they got through that bump in the road and they actually went 2-0 and through their two games where they're missing guys uh, with COVID, which is excellent news. Um, but hopefully we don't have to worry about that anymore. We're seeing teams all around the league. Cincinnati today, ironically enough, is having some uh, COVID issues themselves. So Joe Mixon go on that list uh, and Hendrickson yesterday went on the list. So uh, it's happening still in the league. Just got to make sure we're keeping our eye on the prize here, but hopefully no more COVID issues uh, for the Chiefs. Hopefully that's a thing of the past for this team. 
and the Broncos. We'll see where this goes, but they're in the spot the Chiefs were prior to the Pittsburgh game because their great kicker, Brandon McManus, and Sam Martin, their veteran punter, are both COVID list. I mean, they may have to play this game with a backup. Is Elliot Fry going to sign with them? And like we could see Elliot Fry kicking for the Broncos this week after he was kicking for the Chiefs two weeks ago. That's just how nutty this has been. Uh, and again, we're just prayers and thoughts if we can get through this pandemic, but it's made the NFL just nuts on a day-to-day -day basis. The third part of the mad scramble happened on Saturday night. I'm sorry, Sunday night. Sunday night after the Bronco or after the Bengals game, Sunday night after the Bengals game. And I'm in the van. We had to drive to Cincinnati. Um, you know, the, the redo of, of vacation here with Clark Griswold driving to Cincinnati. We're on the way back. Everybody's tired, not in a great mood after that Bengals loss. And everybody's kind of halfway comatose. And then, you know him, Andrew Feely, I think, gave out the beck and call. Flexed, flexed. We're forward flexed. It's like, what? And it, no, the, the Bronco game is going to be 24 hours in advance of what it's going to be because that game has been moved forward. Usually flex means moving back, but now it is moving forward 24 hours. And since that first second of finding that out and in talking to Coach Reed and talking to Spags and talking to EB and I've talked to people in the organization, it has been indeed a mad scramble because logistically I said football teams are aircraft carriers. They're not cruisers or PT boats or speed boats. There is a lot involved. You go, ah, well, you know what? Let's just move that game up 24 hours. What do you think? Man, it has been nuts in that regard, just getting ready to play this game against Denver because of the forward flex. NFL teams and NFL players are perhaps the greatest creatures of habit ever, and everything is so routine-oriented. That's why Thursday night games are such an issue in a lot of ways for teams, particularly teams that go on the road on Thursday night. Uh, the Chiefs obviously overcame that uh, in the Chargers game earlier this year, but I don't have the number. I don't have the number off the top of my head, but I bet if you looked at teams on Thursday night games, the road team probably is losing those games two thirds of the time, and the the reason behind that is because of the routine scramble that they have to go through. A Saturday game isn't quite that, but it's close in a lot of ways because Saturday, if you're going on the road, is normally your travel day. Well, all of a sudden Friday is the travel day. Everything gets moved up a bit, and if you don't have the foresight uh, because you don't know the game's coming up and going to be on a Saturday uh, to get ready for that game a little early, a little ahead of time. It's very difficult all of a sudden waking up on um, a Monday and realizing, oh, we play a day sooner than we originally thought. It's quite difficult. Um, the good news for the Chiefs is they have the best in the business in terms of uh, coaches and guys getting ready for this kind of thing, getting the players prepared. And also, we have the luxury of knowing the Broncos. We've played them once already this year. We play the Broncos twice a year, every year. So it's not quite as difficult as if it was a team that we haven't played in a long time that you don't have film and uh, intel on. So it, it helps that it's the Broncos, but uh, still not easy being a Saturday game. Like I mentioned, though, I do think the players, just from a competitive standpoint, like that it's a little earlier, though, because this way, once again, Again, they can get back out there on the field uh, and, and show what they can do. Because after a game like Sunday against the Bengals, you just have a bad taste in your mouth, you know? So I think the guys are excited to get back out there. But uh, from a preparation and routine standpoint, Saturday games are tough. You and I know this. And sometimes part of the Defending Kingdom podcast is let people have a peek or a listen uh, behind the curtain, if you will, or a behind the audio wall. Because this is when... I'm most proud of what this franchise can do and how they do it because the infrastructure of this team is so strong and it really starts with coach Reed, but a guy like Mitch Reynolds, is just one that comes into play. Cause just think about it with, you've got a football team, you're going to have what somewhere in the vicinity of maybe 80 hotel rooms to hundred hotel rooms. You have to have meeting rooms lined up for with AV set up in every one of those rooms for uh, I'm getting down to the rudimentary levels here. Now, when all that's set up for a Saturday night and you're going, oh, you know what? let's just do that Friday night. Oh, is, is the Knights of Columbus having their meeting in there the night before? Or is, I don't know, uh, is your wife's former school having a prom night in there? I don't know. It's like, well, no, we're not. We're booked up. It, it is crazy to think a hotel doesn't sit there and have hold all these rooms for a night before thinking, Gee, you know what? They might get forward flex to be the first team to do that in 07. Let's go ahead and maybe just put that. No. And the team flies in a 767. Like the team doesn't own its own plane that just sets in a hangar at the beck and call. 
they use a provider. There's a second provider here, a, 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 a vendor. And they're going, yeah, you know what? We got like 10 of those. Let's just get, hey, is a 767 ready to go? It, it's crazy to think the mad scramble that has to go, hey, everything's moved up 24 hours to get this put in place. It is, it's going to take, again, uh, a yeoman's effort by everybody here uh, in the Chiefs Kingdom inner, inner circle uh, to pull this off. Yeah, it's difficult. That really puts it in perspective because there's so many things that happen to make an NFL game occur. The guys don't just show up and the lights turn on, the TVs turn on, and hey, the game's starting. No, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes uh, for a game to happen. I am glad in some ways that it's not a home game, just for all of our coworkers' sake. Uh, all the things that happen to, to put on a game presentation is a lot, and if all of a sudden you realize that you're doing a game a day early, it's very difficult. Uh, so I'm not envious of the Broncos people. They have to do all this stuff um, at mile high uh, that they weren't expecting they'd have to do uh, 24 hours earlier. But yeah, there's just a lot that goes into it. And Mitch Reynolds, you mentioned him. He helps arrange all this stuff uh, for the team and get uh, the team from point A to point B with no issues because that's what you want for the football team. You don't want them to worry uh, about how we're getting to Denver or where we're staying or where the meeting rooms are. Coach Reed isn't going to have to worry about any of that because he has people that worry about that. Uh, but yeah, quite a test here for Reynolds and his staff uh, to get everything moved up 24 hours. Definitely a lot harder than just, hey, we'll just do it a day sooner. No big deal, right? No, it's a very big deal. I mean, the team has seven buses that go everywhere. The, it, so you, the hotel's got to be ready. They've got to be available. You have to have all those rooms available, all those meeting rooms available. I mean, there's just a lot of things in play here to say, ah, oh, let's just move it up 24 hours. And and from what I can tell, there wasn't a whole lot of notice for anybody uh, in the organization. Like it was kind of like us in that van. Like what? Okay, mad scramble. The final part of this defending the kingdom episode, mad scramble, is dealing with the probabilities into this week. All right, and the Denver game. Some have said in the Chiefs' kingdom, I've heard discussion, public and privately, about, well, why would you even want to win this game? Like, just, you know, rest, guys. What? You want to get at least the two seed. If Tennessee wins, they got the one seed. We know that. But you want to get the two seed, because if you can win your first game, you want another home game. Oh, and if the one seed gets upset, like, oh, I don't know, 2019, the Chiefs were not the one seed that year. They were the two seed. You want to get be able to be in a position to get a home game. All right, that being said, the mad scramble here, possibilities, probabilities. Chiefs win, Titans win, the Chiefs are the two. Titans lose, Chiefs win, whoops, the one, you get the bye. But about 15% chance, I think, is what people are saying there. But other than that, again, let's go back to the way we started the show. This Chiefs-Broncos game, 3.30, Saturday afternoon, Central Time, in the States, for those of you who are around the world, lights the fuse for this whole flow chart of stuff. That's going to happen over the next 30 hours. Yeah, a lot could happen. A lot could change. I'm with you. I understand that there's all different kinds of probabilities and things and people wondering, well, do the Chiefs really want to be the two seed? Yes, the Chiefs want to be the two seed because you want to have home field advantage as long as you possibly can. And if the Chiefs get the two seed, all you need to happen is for Tennessee to lose at some point. And all of a sudden, you have an opportunity to host a fourth consecutive AFC title game here in Kansas City. That's what you want. So we'll just state that obviously. Now, we all know that if the Titans lose to the Texans, like you said, and the Chiefs win, we will be the one seed. We will have the bye. We'll be hanging out, uh, eating chips and salsa uh, during wildcard weekend. That's the hope. But if we just assume, because of probabilities and all that, that the Titans win and the Chiefs win, because this is a Chiefs podcast and we're gonna, we want the Chiefs to win. So we're assuming the Chiefs win in these scenarios and the Titans win. We're now looking at probabilities for the seven seed, because that's the team that the Chiefs would play in the wild card round. So I saw these probabilities on Twitter. I did not calculate them, them myself. Uh, I saw them from Real Bird Lawyer. He's a great follow on Twitter, actually, a big Chiefs fan. Um, does stuff for Sports Illustrated. So thank you for these. Uh, but right now, he has the Chargers at a 45% chance of being the seven seed. So seeing the Chargers for a third time. The Colts at a 27% chance. The Bills at an 11% chance. The Patriots at a 9% chance. The Raiders at 6%. And the Steelers at 2%. If you want to watch some games and figure out what they mean, if games go the way that you would assume they would go, if the favorites win all the games outside of the games I'm talking about, if the Chargers beat the Raiders, we're probably going to play the Chargers in the first round, okay? If the Raiders beat the Chargers, we're going to probably play the Colts in the first round. Now, if the Colts lose to the Jags 
it gets crazy. Like it, it opens up doors for us to play the Steelers, even the Ravens maybe in the first round. So all kinds of crazy things could happen. But if you assume that teams that are supposed to win, win right now, the team that we're most likely to play is the Chargers, which the NFL would absolutely love, I'm sure, because we've had drama between these two teams both times they've played this year. Two of the best young quarterbacks in the NFL, of course, and Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert. Uh, but then also the Colts. That's an interesting matchup as well because you have Jonathan Taylor um, and you have that great Colts squad that's been, they were down at the beginning of the year and really caught fire uh, in the middle of the year. And Jonathan Taylor is a legitimate MVP candidate. So lots of possibilities and interesting things that could happen here. For the Chiefs, and I know this because I've been around this team for a long time now, all they care about is Denver. They're not worrying about any of this stuff and they'll let the cards just fall. But uh, it's fun for us as fans to be watching games and having an idea of kind of what they could dictate for later on. So we'll see what happens over the course of the weekend. But the first order of business is beating Denver. Yep, and that'll be a tall task. I think Denver is going to play with a lot of pride in this game. They have talent. And if anybody thinks this is going to be a walk on the park, they're wrong. And the Chiefs trying to get a 13th consecutive win. But we'll close it out this way because I know people have asked you, they ask me on a daily basis, probably six or seven times, whether I'm in a studio like this or um, getting a text message, who would you want to play in the playoffs? And I will give you, Andy Reid has taught me, bring it on. It does not matter when, where, why, or how, I'll bring it on. You give me all the Marvel Comics villains all at once just line them up in front of me take them on just let's have at it but that's where we're at we've had a mad scramble mad scramble with covid to get to this mad scramble weekend that leads to a mad scramble in the playoffs absolutely and you know one thing that i've been thinking about uh after the Bengals game and after some games earlier this season that we'd like to have back it's a great opportunity to learn and to get better for this time. And what my point is, is things that happened against the Bengals, we did some good things in that game, but things happened against the Bengals that are maybe uncharacteristic of this team or went in the Bengals' favor that didn't go in the Chiefs' favor. The beauty of this game is that the Chiefs may have another opportunity to play the Bengals in the playoffs or to play the Bills, who we lost to earlier this year, or the Titans. And what we have an opportunity to do here if we play those teams again is we have games on tape where the other team did things to us that worked. Well, what can we do now? We can learn from those. And that's the beautiful thing. If you face the Bengals or the Chargers even, who we lost to earlier this year, you can look at those games and say, hey, they did this well, how do we stop it? And that's just a real luxury. Look at 2019, people forget about this, but the path to the Lombardi Trophy, we lost to the Texans and lost to the Titans in the regular season that year. And what we do, we learn from those games and beat those teams when it really counted. So that's my hope uh, this time around, if we see those teams again here uh, in the postseason, we'll see how the chips all fall. But uh, the beauty of Coach Reed and of uh, this coaching staff is they always look at what happened previously and they learn from it. And almost when you lose, if you're looking for any kind of silver lining and loss, if you lose, it makes you look at it maybe a little bit harder. And all of a sudden, if you face those teams again, you can learn from those mistakes. So uh, that's the good thing, I guess, about losing games. I don't know. I want the Chiefs to go 20 and 0 every single year, but uh, losing to good playoff teams is a good experience in a lot of ways to take what happened in that game and make sure the bad things don't happen again and the good things are amplified. So we'll see if that happens here again in the playoffs, but uh, it's that time of year, Mitch. We finally made it. Uh, it's hard to believe the season has kind of flown by, but uh, once again, seeking uh, a Lombardi trophy. And I'll add too, if we can win this game, we'll become just the fifth team in NFL history to win 12 or more games in four straight seasons. Think about that. And there's lots of reasons to win this game on Saturday afternoon. You mentioned something interesting. We'll close this way because I'll just have the fans. We'll get into this next week. We do our playoff preview show, but just go through the Chiefs schedule. Start with week one. Cleveland's been eliminated, but at the time, think about what they were like. Just go down through the schedule and go, yep, they're still in it. Oh, they're in it. Oh, they're still in it. Oh, they're in it. Oh, they're still in it. It has been a season full, a mad scramble season, if you will, full of playing play playoff caliber teams every week for the most part. Maybe Sands won. Okay, the other thing you mentioned, we'll close this way, is the psychology of the Chiefs for a long time with the Hunter. Then they were the hunted. Even think, look at the way this season started. Revenge tour by the Ravens, by the Bills, by the Titans. They all want to, okay? Now it flips back to me psychologically that the Chiefs are back to being the hunter. 
and sometimes you hunt and it's a mad scramble. Ten, five, touchdown! Lock it down! And the celebration begins at Arrowhead.